Hello, folks. Welcome to a brand new episode of Smoke and Bugatti, Got em, the most interactive music podcast there is. Today, we got a special record on board, and, uh, you know, I'm stoked about this one. Now, the premise of the show is the same as usual. You're going to have two numbers where we're going to listen to this record, side A, side B, smoke, one per side. And now, for the favorite part of everybody's day, the Oracle's pick. The Oracle of Oxford County, Mr. Jeremiah Charlton, lead us in. I was challenged. I was challenged by my friend, my confidant, who said, I would like you to do a wild card of Asian progressive music. And you delivered tenfold. So I said, okay. I looked at 10 different albums, and this is Ooh. the one that I chose. It is called Guru Gypsy, spelt interesting, G-U-R-U-H, and then G-I-P-S-Y. Yeah. 1977. Yeah, Are this, you ready, folks? Yeah, I'm this, not this telling is, you anything else. This is it. Let's go, let's go and do this. A lot of meat on the bone. I spoke and we got him. Let's listen to it, folks. Let's go. Guru Gypsy, nineteen seventy six. This is uh, this is a tough record. This is a hard to beat sort of record. This is only the A side. This blew me the fuck away. Yeah, and let's have a little backstory, folks. Let them know. Little Story. The guy, Guru, is Guru Sarkano Putra. And I said, this is from Indonesia, okay? If you know anything about Indonesia, the name Sarkano should ring a bell. If not, mm -hmm. more about history and the world in general. Read better books. Read, just read books. Let's start with books in general, and then we'll work on the better ones <laughs> as we go along. <laughs> Sarkano is the founder of Indonesia. Yeah. Okay, independence. Indonesian independence. Okay, the first president was like in charge for a long time. This is his son. Who is <laughs> This is Sarkano's son. The fact that Sarkano's son made this album makes the album so much crazier to me. Gee, I have not I haven't even got my 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 brain doesn't work on this level yet. Because I listen to the whole the whole album not knowing that. This is the whole album. I was like, man, this album is fucking great. Right? And then I look up the history of it and this guy, and I'm like, think about this. Let me just give you an example. Imagine, G, that Richard Nixon's son made an album this good. That would, that would, you, would that you just fucking mind? You just blew my top, brother. I would love to. See, I would love to hear that. <laughs> saying, Richard Nixon's son or his yeah. daughter, his daughter Pat, his daughter Pat has an, a prog band that mixes uh, prog with Gamelan music. Yeah, we we got to talk about that real quick because it, in terms of uh, in terms of what this record is bringing, it's the perfect mixture of uh, you know a. You're talking about somebody that is fully tied to their cultural identity from Indonesia. So this music is fully submerged in folkloric, uh, in the folkloric sound of, of Indonesia without losing a step in the modern pop rock band scenario. It's crazy. It's unbelievable. Of course, <laughs> a self-produced record. Because, yep. you know, Only they, released they, on cassette, brother. Yeah. Dig that. Yeah. In that super hip, you know, it, it was this album was had a couple of uh, months of being worked on. And and by the way, folks, usually a couple of months. Record, no, no, gee, 16 months, 16, 16 months. over a year. They worked on this album. Well, it's now, the only reason that could happen is because obviously it's the it's the it's it's the founder of the nation's son. So that's why it's all like self-produced like money was not an issue. Like I read about, like they were recording at the greatest studios, at I the mean, music laboratory in Jakarta. Yeah, yeah unbelievable. The music lab in Jakarta, which is which is crazy. This this uh, cassette gets released in December '77, and 
this is not a short album. This is 59 minutes and 34 seconds. Literally, you could only fit 30 more, less than 30 seconds. I mean, this thing was tapped out. Um, <laughs> so me, what do you think? First track? Just for, come me, in? for me, that first track is called Independent Indonesia. And it's a hell of a statement of, of what you're about to like embark on because it covers, it's like, it's, it's, yeah, it's it's a it's one person's picture of what Indonesia is. That's so as now, best as I can put it. So what's so funny is the band Gypsy is the second part of it, right? And they were an Indonesian band, and they did they did covers of like ELP and King Crimson, yeah, and General Giant and stuff like that. They're, like think about how crazy that cover band was, and then. So they're the band actually playing the the rock instruments, the drummer, the bass. The drummers are in, is insane in this album, right? The drummers is insane. The bass player is insane. Yes, the the sound that they both have, um, it's just really, uh, you know, it doesn't sound like seventy seven. So what happened to me is like at first, I the very first part, let's say the first, I don't know, I'm just going five minutes of the track, roughly. Yeah, I'm hearing a little bit of those influences, like the ELP, like the sound of the organ, but all these things, right? But as this album progresses, I kept on thinking, like, I've never heard this mix before. Because the no. Gamelan sits nice with the the, uh, the prog. You know, I, I the thing about Indonesian instruments, right? For, to talk about folk music, uh, there's added notes. There's patterns that are not Western patterns. There is a different texture to the sound. It's a very percussively driven, which is perfect for this sort of music. And you don't think about how good that mesh is like you're talking about. But specifically the gamelan sound in this world with the rolling drums and the bass that also kind of rolls through with the uh, with the drums th- that you hear from the first cut into the second cut, which was my standout track, Floating uh, Chopin, uh, really had that... It, it, it starts getting deeper and deeper into the Indonesian sound, and it's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like the, as the as that side progresses, like the more and more the gamelan sort of works in with it, and it's it's just so great. The guitar yeah. solo and like the third track was really great. Yeah. So so Guru writes this album, brings it over to the Gypsy Band, and uh, so what does he play in the band? He's he's a, Guru says he's playing piano, gender. I don't know what that is. Okay, and then the lyrics, and then the band, Gypsy, uh, Odnik Nasachon on guitars, Abadi, Sosman Mini Moog. Then you mm-hmm. got Ron, Ronnie Harahup on piano, Chrissy on bass, and Keenan Nastion on drums and vocals. So the guitar player and the, and the drummer have to be related some way. Yeah. And, 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 and um, then that's like the regular band, and there's also like five other guys that are on top, plus a, a orchestra section and a Balinese gambling ensemble. So this is just unbelievable. Yeah. So so just so you know, a, a, a gender is like um, it's a type of metal phone. So it's it Balinese. It's it's made intended for gambling ensembles. Uh, it lays down straight like a xylophone. Nice. And okay. You hit it, and you, now, yeah. Yeah, and you hit it with mallets, which is yes, I that do know sort of like that sort of sound, which is what breaks the patterns down and makes the band fit in so well in that prog world with the folk world. I mean, it makes sense that he's the one coming off of of you know he's the jump off for these tracks because he's got the access to the best Indonesian instruments, and so yeah, I think it's time, folks. We go that journey. Yeah, th- this is we can Side talk about two. this album so long, but l- let's uh, yeah, uh, let the folks know what we're uh, what we're doing here, and let them f- know what they got to be listening to, and uh, let's kick it. Guru Gypsy, okay, this is Indonesian Prague, nineteen seventy seven. Smoke them if you got them. Uh oh. So as we progress into this thing on Smoking the Big Adam, uh, we're listening to a hell of a record, 1977, Guru Gypsy. It's uh, Indonesian. It's something you've, you've never heard. Uh, originally at the top of uh, Side A, uh, Jeremiah was talking about how the music is slowly disintegrating into just the folk aspect of the gamelan and the ensemble. 
we hit it hard on the side B. Like it just yeah. kicks off real fast. It's awesome. It's, it's tremendous. awesome. Do I like this side even better? Yeah, this this side gets better than the first side. This now, is where like I was listening to the album at first, and and uh, I just kept thinking to myself, I've never heard this before. I've heard Gamblin music, obviously. Um, one of my friends actually moved to Indonesia to study it, so yeah, I've I've heard that music before, um, but not in this context, and not so effortlessly laid on top of each other. It usually, you know, that's that seems always weird because usually, usually you can see you can see the crack where, where oh, this isn't quite fit. They were making it fit in this one. It is out just completely it's like, seamless. It's like David Byrne doing a salsa album. It's just come on. It's it's very interesting. Oh yeah, we can talk about that Byrne thing because I gotta anyway. We do, we don't want to get canceled. Um, it, the it's central, not good, folks. It wasn't good. It wasn't good. It, 